Welcome to tutorial video on assignment and value macros for Twine 2.0. Now I've already set up a story here called assignment and value macros to get us started. Looking at this first passage, the beginning passage, I'm using what is known as an assignment macro to start this off. To use an assignment macro in Twine 2.0, it is typed in a parenthetical phrase that is set off by parentheses. So I have here an opening parentheses, the word set. The word set being a number of keywords that belong to assignment macros. And then what I want it to do, I want it to set condition, the variable, to the string great. Now immediately after that, I have this sentence, your current condition is, and then the variable condition. When Twine renders this, it will get rendered as your current condition is and then the value great which was just previously set to the variable condition to great so your current condition is great and then I have a link to spooky room now in spooky room I'm doing something a little bit different now I'm using a value macro that is I'm testing if condition is great now we just know from the beginning passage that condition was set to great. So now in spooky room, if, and again it's set in a parenthetical expression, if condition, the variable condition, is the string great, do whatever is in brackets. Now within brackets, I have an assignment macro that I just had in the beginning passage. This time, however, set is setting the variable condition to the string good. So in total, if the variable condition is great, then it will be set to the string good. Immediately after that, I have another sentence that in runtime will be rendered as your current condition is good. And then we progress to another link, another spooky room. In another spooky room, I copy what I had in spooky room. In this case, however, we're testing if the variable condition is good. If it is, then we follow the expression that's in brackets, and in this case, set the variable condition to bad. And then we finally render it again. Your current condition is bad. So in practice, it looks exactly as I described it. Your current condition is great. The string great was set to the variable condition in the first passage. We go to spooky room. Your current condition is good because in spooky room, which is the passage we're currently looking at, it tested if the variable condition was great. If it was, then it set it to good. And so we have the current condition is good. Now when we go to another spooky room, we see our current condition is bad. So we've passed through two spooky rooms. In the case of another spooky room, this last passage here, we used a value macro, the if statement, to test if the variable condition was good. If it was, then we set it to bad. Now, for assignment macros, there are a couple of different ways to change values. The first being what I've just showed you here. I used set. I can also use put. If I use put, however, it changes the way this expression is constructed. Instead of condition to great, it's the other way around. Great into condition. So we put a value into variable. And we see it works the same way. We now set, we now put, that is, great into condition. Then we test it, and it's good. And then finally it's bad, because our current condition changed through each passage.
However, what if we wanted to run these passages more quickly? That is, we didn't we wanted something to happen in the passage, but we didn't necessarily want the user to click on it. Well, we can use another type of macro, another type of value macro called display. Display. And then the name of the passage. Spooky room. And then we can run it one more time. So now we're putting, to start at the very top here, we're putting the string great into the variable condition. We're then displaying, we're having Twine render the sentence, your current condition is, and then the value of the variable condition. Then we're going to display the passage spooky room, and then we're going to display the passage another spooky room. So our condition is great, our condition is good, we have the link that was part of Spooky Room, and then our condition is bad. Because it displayed Spooky Room, and then it displayed another Spooky Room. Now, so it won't show the link again, I'll just take the link to another Spooky Room out of Spooky Room. <laughs> Well, that's all well and good. Of course, we can display other passages, we can set values, we can put values. But what if we wanted to do some things with numbers? We wanted a random number or we wanted a choice among some numbers. How would we do that? Well, there are two different value macros we can use for that. The first is random. Random. It takes two numbers, the first being some low number and the second being some higher number and then random picks a number picks a whole number between the first number and the second number inclusively that is it includes the first number and the second number To see this rendered, we'll run it like this, a random number, and then have the value mac random pick a number between 1 to 10. And a random number is 9. We run it again, a random number is 3. And we run it one more time, a random number is 1. Well, that's pretty useful. But what if we didn't necessarily want a range of numbers? that is consecutive numbers 1 through 10 what if we wanted to pick either this one or that one or some other one well there's a way to do that too we can use either 1 or 4 or 5 in this case we use the value micro either and it will pick one of whatever set we give it in this case one four and five it will either pick one or it will pick four or it will pick five but it allows us to put our numbers in to pick from so we have our random number two one number or another in this case five and let's run it again one number or another picked one this time, and our random number was seven. And our condition, of course, went from great to good to bad. Well, that's all well and good, too. We can have Twine run these expressions, these value macros and assignment macros for us. What if we want to save the result? Well, we can do that, too. We can combine macros. this case we're going to set the variable random number to
the value macro, random, 1 to 10. And so above we have the expression set the variable random number to the result of random 1 to 10. We can also do the same to the either value macro. So now we have the variable random number set to the result of the expression random 1 to 10 and we have either number, the variable either number set to either 1, 4, or 5. Notice too that in each case we, include, we enclose each expression in its own parentheses. So we open parentheses for set then an open parenthesis for random, a close parenthesis for random, and a close parenthesis for set. And so we have the same result. Random number is 3, one number or another is 5. And so there you have it. Uh, an introduction to what assignment and value macros, and how they work in Twine 2.0. They're not terribly different than older Twine versions, if you've used those. And they're not all that complicated either. Even when you nest them, as we have with random either, we just have to remember each time to open the parentheses, have our expression, and close the parentheses each time. So thanks for watching.